everyone. So today I want to show you how to do a wax collage using, uh, we're going to be using white encaustic paint and encaustic medium and we're going to be embedding these beautiful uh, feathers into the wax and it's a really simple project actually but it just looks really cool. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and melt some wax some of the uh, white wax. I've got my little tin here, my little tuna tin. And I'm putting that on my hot plate. And I'm gonna go ahead and, let's move this out of the way. All my little feathers. Get those guys out of the way. I'm gonna pull this over so you can see a little bit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick that on its end so it starts to kind of melt in there. And I could, you know, I could actually cut a piece of this off, but I'm just going to let enough melt so that I have a good amount. I've got three feathers picked out here that I think will make a nice little composition. And you could choose lighter feathers or darker feathers. This one, maybe I'll use that one instead. I kind of like how it goes from light to dark. And we're going to embed, we're going to prepare, I actually am using an encaustic board here but you could use a wood board, that would be fine. Okay, so while the white paint melts, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare this board by putting a layer of just the clear encaustic medium onto here. And this will allow me to then press the feathers into the wax. So I'm going to quickly fuse this. Make sure if you're using a heat gun too to be careful with, uh, make sure you're working on a piece of wax paper or a tile or something that's not flammable and can take a little bit of heat. Because this heat gun gets a lot hotter than my craft gun, I think. Okay, so I have a nice waxy surface here to embed my feathers into. I'm not going to do it yet. It's still too warm. I'm going to wait for it to cool just a little bit. Okay, let's try this out. So I think I want the tall one in the center. Just doing my best to kind of gently press it into the wax a little bit so it stays in place. And I may actually do, you know what, I'm going to do another coat just to make it a little thicker. Put a little extra where I had that feather placed. And you know what might be fun actually, since we've been using a lot of vintage materials, is to get some vintage papers and maybe even add those in. This would act as just kind of a backdrop to our feathers. I don't want something that's going to be too bold because I want the feathers to stand out the most. Let's just see how it might look. And obviously we can do several layers of wax to push back. Yeah, I think I want it to cover the whole way. Paper. Let's see if I have a bigger piece. And something like that might be cool. So 
this is where you could incorporate, uh, you know, all sorts of things. Um, fabric, ribbons, string. That might be kind of interesting. Let's try that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of wax. Let's see which side I like best. Flatten out this torn. I like that it's torn. I like that it's kind of messy, but it's soft. It's not too graphic. I don't want it to overpower the the uh, feathers. So I can just actually rub this into the wax. The wax is quite warm still, so it's going to act like a glue in a way. It's going to keep it nice and stable, or keep it nice and stuck down. Okay, I'm going to do a coat of wax over that. I'm going to move my flammable vintage papers out of the way. Please be mindful of that kind of stuff, guys. I don't want to hear of anyone having fire. Okay, let me zoom in a little for you. So that's kind of neat, I like that. I want this to be a very simple project, something that's a little bit minimalist, something that's a little, has a kind of a simple poetic quality to it. I'm just gonna do a whole nother layer and I think I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna go across the same way. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna go this way. We've done two coats going this way, so now I'm going to go this way. We're going to—it's a good idea to alternate. Now this should make the paper transparent, which is a really cool effect. So you'll be able to see the writing on the other side. how that looks. Actually, I'm going to keep it this way and do another coat. Let it cool for a minute. Isn't that neat? So now you can see both sides of the, the writing, which makes it even more um, abstract and it becomes much more of a design element than, you know, necessarily trying to read what's on this letter. I really like that. And guys, if you like vintage stuff, um, keep your eye out at antique stores, on Etsy. There's lots of good treasures to be found. And a lot of times you can get them for pretty inexpensive. I'm going to do another coat. You can see that I fuse after each coat. That's part of what you need to do when you're doing encaustics. You need to uh, bond that next layer to the layer previous. That's what fusing does. This gun is like, this heat gun is just awesome. You can see here that the wax is a little bald there, so I'm going to add a little more. Sometimes where the paper might be a little thicker or there's a fold, it might kind of lift up. What's neat about wax too is that you're actually making this archival. As soon as you start to put layers of wax over these papers, they're not going anywhere. And they're not going to, they're actually being protected by, you know, from the elements, which is really neat. Wax was used back in the day, like way back in the day, for that reason, just to preserve things. So, all right. It's pretty warm. I'm going to give it a few seconds. Wax does take some patience. Encaustics do take some patience, so try not to rush through the process. Sometimes I get a little excited and I go too fast. I'm 
using a little bit of pressure to kind of get that that feather to stick down. It keeps popping up, but I'm hoping what I might need to do is actually break it a little bit. So I'm going along this little spine part, this little hard part, and I'm just snapping it a little bit. Take some of that bend out. Put it back up, down. I think that'll lay a little better. You can kind of get creative here and if you want to start spreading out the, the edges a little bit so you get that pretty curly kind of separated feather look and get that going. It's kind of neat. Adds interest and movement to the piece. You don't want things too uniform. It's kind of fraying the edges a little bit. This one over here. See if it's going to cooperate with me. I mean, feathers are so pretty. You just why wouldn't you want to put them in wax, right? Preserve them so you can enjoy the beauty. And look around your house, see what else you might want to incorporate into this project. This is just kind of my interpretation of it, but there's really so many different things you could do. I really like those kind of fuzzy bits coming out. Adds a little bit of a wild feeling to it. I might even get my brayer. So that is looking pretty sweet, don't you think? I mean, that's what a beautiful way to, you know, celebrate the beauty of feathers by making art with them. Honoring our bird friends. Okay, so now I'm going to put wax over this. We'll see what happens. You can see the wax skipped over a little area here. Just gonna go back in. You can tell I'm probably gonna have to do quite a bit of wax to make sure that guy stays down because he likes to pop up. But I'm kind of loving that. I'm gonna go ahead and fuse. Pretty cool, guys. I am kind of excited. That's an understatement. <laughs> uh, every time I use wax, I discover something new. And I love that. So it's kind of ironic, but if you guys see right here, let me see, I'll zoom in for you. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little tiny fleck of gold leaf right there. 
I don't know how it got in there, but um, I love that because I do actually want to do gold leaf in this. So it must have been like reading my mind or something because there it is. So you can still see the feathers are still popping through, but they're pretty much encased in that wax. Might add a little bit more here. Look for those bald spots. I don't know if you guys can hear the frogs in our garden, but they're really loud. Okay. I'm going to let it cool. Never done feathers and wax, so this I'm doing this for the first time with you guys. It's pretty pretty fun. Now I need to think about what I want to do next to it. Okay guys, so I actually found this twine in my stash of stuff, and it's got gold flex through it. I don't know if you can see that, but it does. Now it's blurry. Okay. Anyway, so I, I love the idea of it kind of um, looking like it's holding the, the uh, feathers in place. So I think I'm going to use this as an element and I'm just going to find where I want it and press it down into the wax. Kind of embed it into the wax. Hopefully make sure it's straight. That would be good. Really stuck down. That's why I use wax paper. So I think that's a nice little element to add kind of a linear, a linear element to the piece. I'm going to put wax over that. pushed in quite a bit. It's good to have an old pair of tweezers or something that you can use when you're doing this kind of work. Do not use your current tweezers. They are, will be ruined. <laughs> really exciting. Most of the time when I work with encaustics I'm doing um, it as a finishing layer over my work. So this is kind of different for me where I'm just using the elements and the wax and that's kind of it. And it's really, it's really very fun. I hope you guys enjoy this process. Alright, and I think for the finishing touch I'm going to be brave and get out my gold leaf. Now this stuff is gorgeous with wax, but it can be a little um, <laughs> crazy, like it's super fine and it can, it can be like a little messy. It'll stick to everything. See, it's, it's just gorgeous, but it likes to stick to everything, so got to be patient with it. I think what I want to do, I'm going to get one of my stencils. I want to make some gold spots, like in the couple, just a few on the, the feathers. Get out my trusty stencils. And don't worry too much about these, these sides here where it's kind of gotten a mess. You can just carve those off when we're done. You can peel them off even. Put them back into your pot of medium. Don't waste this stuff. As you guys know, it's expensive. So you can see how this is looking. Really kind of cool. And that, that rope or that twine is now saturated with wax, so it's become part of the, part of the composition.
All right, let me find that stencil. So I have this stencil from Tim Holtz, and what I like about it is that it has circles, but they're not perfect circles. I don't want perfect circles. I just want some more organic looking um, dots for the feathers. So I'm gonna take my gold leaf, I'm gonna put it over the area that I want it to adhere to the wax. And I'm gonna attempt to just push it down with my finger through the hole. And it's tricky, but stuff sticks to everything. It's so funny. It's actually pretty forgiving though. You just have to kind of get over the fact that it sticks to everything and then just kind of work with it. The wax takes the gold leaf really well. I'm just trying to get it into those holes where I want my little spots. And like I said, I'm kind of okay without, I don't need the spots to be perfect. I want them to be very organic looking, just like they would be on a real feather. See how that looks. And then you can further kind of squish it down with your finger. You want to make sure once you're ready for adding the gold leaf that you're not going to be doing anything else to the um, to the piece because you don't want to be putting wax over the gold leaf. And we'll do a couple over here. See, I've got gold leaf all over my hands. Yeah, that's just part of the gig. Don't stress about it. If you're a mixed media artist, you're probably used to getting pretty messy anyway. And this is pretty messy. But at least it sparkles. So that's kind of cool. If it gets somewhere you don't want it, just get your tweezers and pull it up. Kind of breaking it up a little bit. Like I said, if you don't like, you put on too much, scrape it away. These dots are more like well, they're more just like not dots. That's okay. Still kind of cool. We can't forget this guy. He needs some gold love. I also think I have wax medium, a little bit of wax medium on my finger, which is not making it any easier. And now I'm getting it everywhere. Well done. Kind of burnishing with my finger a little bit. I think I need some more on this guy. kind of like how it's breaking up actually, kind of cascading down the feather a little bit. It's a little bit too much. Scrape it back. Don't be afraid to kind of, you know, dig in and go for it because 
can just refuse. So yeah, I quite like this. Okay. I think that's enough gold. So I think like jewelry, you don't want to overdo it, right? With gold, with metallics. Kind of okay with there being little flecks of gold in there. Yeah, it's pretty. Okay guys, so I will tell you that I attempted to do white wax at the top and I just didn't like it. So I, I scraped it all away with this tool right here. You get these uh, craft shops, art stores, online. It's a, it's a, it's a clay tool but it's great for wax. I just scraped off all the white and I put on some more medium and fused it and it's back to where it was. So that's what's great about wax. Again, it's, it's, I find it can be quite forgiving. I'm gonna add a little more since I did really peel back quite a bit to get it back to the, and you know, listen to yourself. Like right now, I feel like this is done. I should just leave it alone instead of messing with it. I make sure there's more I could do to it, but it's simple and I like that it's simple. So I might just do another one because it's really fun. Doing the final fuse, just getting everything set. Watch that your gold doesn't move because it will start to float on the wax. All right, yeah, I think she's done. So I hope you guys try this. I probably will just film another one because I do want to try the white wax um, and do another little feather collage. Why not? I'm having fun, so keep going, right? Show you a couple more techniques.